my concern uh, wanting to move towards something which is a, a more long-term strategy was that game A was simply our genetic code, our uh, tribal nature uh, manifesting <coughs> itself and that moving from that to anything which isn't that would be such a monumental task that it would require us to go through a new evolution. Yep, yeah. Fortunately, this evolution actually happened about 150,000 to 1.5 million years ago. Okay. Uh, this is really good news because if, if that hadn't happened, I agree with you that the likelihood that we'd be able to sort of <laughs> undergo an evolution of that magnitude in real time with the shit hitting the fan is essentially zero. Um, so this is what I mean when I say that. Human beings are not the same as other primates. Meaningfully, like significantly, something happened. And we're obviously witnessing the consequences of that, but we can actually identify it now and dial it back in. So the story kind of goes like this. I'll try to keep it uh, compact because we don't have infinite time. Um, if you take a look at other primates, close primates, like say orangutans, uh, or gorillas, chimpanzees, etc., what you notice, and, and humans, and in fact, in this case, all social mammals, you notice that they all have access to a particular kind of hierarchical structure, particularly among males. We can call it dominance hierarchy. <laughs> this, is, this phrase has gotten a lot of traction over the past year because of uh, the other Jordan. <laughs> um, so that's commonplace. And we have that. So you might say our natural need to compete with each other for a certain kind of scarcity and to organize ourselves into effective competing bands is real. Like that's a real part of our nature. But human beings also have, and is the thing that actually makes us human and not other kinds of primates, a different way of doing things. It's called a prestige hierarchy, which is odd because it's not really a hierarchy, uh, but it's called a prestige dynamic. So we've got the dominance dynamic, which is a hierarchy, and the prestige dynamic. Other primates don't have the prestige dynamic. This is an incomprehensibly fundamental thing, so it's worth sort of actually slowing down. Chimpanzees do not do a very good job of learning from each other. If a particular chimpanzee has discovered something neato, it doesn't spread through the, through the band or the troop. Uh, this is because dominance hierarchies are premised on mostly physical violence. So a dominant male is able to beat the crap out of other males and therefore has established himself as dominant. And he may have a small number of beta buddies who kind of like get the table scraps and so to support him. But the big thing there is the way that the males relate to each other is largely aversion, meaning you don't make eye contact with the dominant male because that means it's a threat. He's going to kick your ass. Well, it's really fucking hard to learn things from other people if you don't make eye contact with them. Yep. Right? Yep. Human beings found themselves over what appears to have been a pretty darn long ex exploration in evolutionary space finding a way to take advantage of the capacity of learning. So to interject there, some of the listeners that are familiar with previous episodes will know William von Hippel, who wrote uh, The Social Leap. It mm -hmm. was uh, an explanation of how we went from uh, Australopithecus uh, out onto the plains, the development of the throwing arm and all of this sort of stuff. And one of the big um, uh, discoveries or one of the big claims that he made was that the anticipation of felt needs and unwanted needs was a real a, a real key element here. So the fact that chimpanzee creates a tool, let's say a simple tool for poking at something, creating some food, whatever it might be, at the end of the day, it can't anticipate the fact that it needs it again. So it just throws it away. Mm. And then the next day, it comes back, it's got to make the tool again. Yep. However... What the uh, one of the the main archaeological finds, which identified this movement towards being able to anticipate unfelt needs, was that multiple tools were being found in sites where human ancestors had been. So what that meant was that not only had they made them once and then thrown them away, they'd made them and then taken them with them the next day. So it was yeah. like, <clears throat> that anticipation and also, you know, communication. If you can't communicate, and especially if you can't make eye contact, but even if you, you know, you've got no sophisticated language at all, you're totally right. How does the, the collective consciousness grow? It doesn't. It doesn't. So there's a very large number, like 17, maybe more, 
distinct innovations that kind of have you ever seen this like a Japanese puzzle that has a bunch of different pieces where you have to be able to actually be able to twist, pull, and and slide all at once in a very smooth relationship to get it to move? Is this like the just the world's hardest Rubik's cube kind of? <laughs> <laughs> so kind of. And the, and the note the thing is that's interesting is that if you pull, it, it binds on the twist. If you if you slide, it binds on the pull, right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. you have to actually get all so evolution of Homo sapiens sapiens was kind of like that. Like you had to get you had to get grandmothers, which is a neat thing. Like grandmothers, the, the notion that females live long enough that a mother has a daughter and is still alive long enough to actually co-parent her daughter's children is a big deal. Yep. You had to get fatherhood. Like the notion that males could have a lived selection, a, a, a fitness adaptation by virtue of putting their energy into attending to the well-being of their actual biological children is, a neat, is an innovation. You had to have a, a capacity to have anticipated needs. You had to have a capacity to enter into a relationship long enough that communication had a place to emerge. And then you had to have the development of the physiological and neurological capacity to explore the space of potential communication, right? So all of these pieces, you have to have all of them, and they kind of like slide against each other until it snaps into this new thing. 